Hello everyone, thanks for joining my home studio where I share my passion for watercolor painting. And this week we are going to learn how to do a watercolor landscape. This reference is um, taken from Cape Britain, Nova Scotia. We went whale watching at the pier and a place called Sydney, the largest city on the island. Even though we didn't see any whales, and I was a little disappointed, but still I got an inspiration from this place and to do a beautiful watercolor painting. And uh, Sydney is a, a beautiful place and it, uh, it has a lot of unique shops, services and historic sites and stunning scenery. And it also up for Cape Breton Island. And uh, I highly recommend going and checking out this place and I, it, it has a lot of things to offer. Before you go, hit the subscribe button so you guys can get weekly video uploads from our channel. And uh, let's get started guys. Before um, any painting starts and um, we need a little bit of a roadmap and uh, what I mean by that is the light sketch which need to be uh, in place. So this way we know where everything goes. Um, I'm just uh, speeding up my process to expedite the process of sketching. And when you go through this tutorial, don't be discouraged how advanced it is or how intermediate this tutorial is. And is it as simple as I try to keep it as simple as possible? and I give as much as information I can and I also add another boat in the foreground because the foreground looks really weak so I want to make sure that giving some kind of boat to lead us into the painting so whenever I sketch I think everything in a shape um, even like for the mountains at the back I was thinking as one single shape or the simplest shape would be a rectangle so that's how you can improve your sketching. Uh, don't think about each and individual objects. Think everything in shape. It also simplifies everything for you. So I'll start with the first wash, and the first wash um, is the sky, and I'm blending in, uh, blending it with uh, uh, the light wash of the green at the background. I'll fairly admit that. Um, I'm using a Saunders rough watercolor paper and it doesn't accept the paint as, as, I, as I use for cold press. And the color was vibrant and it doesn't give the exact colors what I want. Whereas if I would have painted the exact paint in cold press, it would have been quite different. And um, I can see um, I'm trying to put the colors or whatever I see in my reference. Uh, there's a lot of warmth in it. I put the warmth. Now I'm painting the, uh, the water. So for the water, I'm using cerulean blue for it, even though this looks a little bit uh, vibrant and it's going to go light. And um, as I said, I'm also using a rough uh, a Saunders Waterford and it reacted differently than um, what it would in a cold press watercolor paper. And my painting also came vibrant, as I said. So I'll start with um, a background uh, mountain and the background mountain, I'm using uh, a little bit of green and a little bit of yellow ochre in it. And when I paint, I try to paint in one single brush stroke instead of each and individual stuff. And that's what I'm trying to do on the background building as well. You can paint as a one single shape, then uh, each individual uh, shape as well. So this is my second wash for the mountain and the trees. And um, whenever I mix green, I don't mix green as it is. I mix green with the yellow ochre or a little bit of red in it. Because um, if you use um, green as it is, um, it doesn't look great. So now I'm adding some colors for the background houses and I'm also trying to add these houses because I want to create a, a Z composition from top to bottom. So the foreground boat, the midground boat and the background boat and the houses and it kind of goes like a S curve from foreground to the midground. And I'm adding the, the first wash for the boats as well and I'm making sure to get as vibrant as uh, possible. Because things in foreground, when you paint, uh, it should be vibrant. And things in the background, it should be less saturated. And that also creates depth. When you squint your eyes, if you see, uh, the mountain is super saturated than the rest of the painting. So now, uh, we, fis uh, we finished the first wash and the second wash. Now I'm going to add the shadows. As soon as we add the shadows, um, you can see the lighting started appearing on, uh, uh, light started appearing on our uh, painting. So whenever you paint, layer in a such a way that do the first wash and second wash and do the shadows after that. And it also gives this three dimensional um, shapes um, to our uh, painting at the back. And when I do it, I'm not worried about being um, accurate to reference. So when I started painting, a lot of beginners have this uh, misconception of you have to be exactly close to your reference. Um, don't have to because it's your painting and you want to express yourself 
and I always keep in mind um, that's why uh, when I started painting I get to be able to explore a lot of uh, advanced subjects as well so keep that in mind you don't have to be um, accurate to your reference even when you follow this tutorial you don't have to be exactly uh, copying what I'm painting just learn the essence of what I'm doing and you can apply your own um, um, uh, expression on your painting I'm just showing the roadmap how I do it and you can take this and utilize these techniques to uh, uh, bring your own painting together so now I'm happy with the uh, background building and um, when it comes to the background the mid ground I try to keep my um, uh, details to minimal and not to uh, overdo it and keep it really simple um, as I say and the white building I leave it as it is because I once I add those uh, blue shadows um, we able to create that uh, shadow pattern on it and before it dries out i'm putting some darker tones at the bottom of the house so it kind of gives that uh, anchoring uh, of the houses in there so now i'll focus on the boats uh, for the boats in the mid ground it's the same thing i'm going to use a little bit of blue and there's a lot of blue in it so i'm going to mix it as well and whenever i do this blue i use cobalt blue or cerulean blue and i use a little bit of white paint in it just to get a little bit of consistency on it and before it dries out, I'm going to add the uh, darker tone at the bottom of the boat. And I'll just go and uh, do it on, uh, on the top of the boat as well. So I did have a little bit of difficulty in painting boats before. Uh, as I said, in the, even for the drawing, and I will say again, um, think everything in shape. That will help you to minimize your... Uh, um, minimize your and less frustration process of painting and drawing and for example if I'm painting this boat I was thinking about what shape is it it's a rectangular shape so I'll paint the rectangular shape and is there a darker tone I already added the darker tone so it's kind of like anchors that on the water and now I'm kind of adding some uh, a pigment consistency on the, um, the boat uh, in the foreground I'm kind of trying to add the shadows now and I'll do the exact same thing and um, there is also a little bit of uh, tinge of orange on the side of the boat it's reflecting but um, as I said uh, the sound is a rough watercolor surface it doesn't accept the paint as it is um, I was I was really disappointed uh, but uh, that's when um, a painting comes in uh, alive and uh, you just have to keep going till you see the end result and at the end I ended up having a decent painting uh, but um, I did learn a lot of stuff from it. So I'm also adding this orange on the side. It's called uh, Life Boy. And now I'm adding the boat now. And I am. Um, so when I. This boat, when I added, I'm, uh, I'm also thinking about my uh, light as well. Where the lighting is coming from. The lighting is coming from uh, top, uh, top left. And the easiest way to think about lighting, uh, where it's coming from, is the house at the. In the mid ground and it shows there's a lot of light reflecting on the top and there's a shadow side which is blocking it so it's the same thing here i'm going to add the boat and i'm going to use a little bit of yellow and i'm going to leave the uh, white side as it is and i realized that uh, i did leave a little bit of uh, a light side on this side and uh, it's fine and i'll go and glaze over it again now i'm adding the shadows on the bottom of the at the bottom of the life boy and this is also act as an interesting element for our foreground element so i'm just trying to make sure everything is good and i'll wait for the uh, water reflection till the end till i add the details for everything else so now this is the wash uh, i usually use the darks at the end because in that's how uh, watercolor works you start with the lightest wash and slowly build your darks if you build up your dock um, really early, you're going to lose the depth for your painting. And now I'm adding the decals for the boat. As soon as I add those decals, you can see that um, uh, there's a little bit of form started happening in our um, boats. So now I'm going to add the reflection and the reflection, there's a little bit of uh, blue in it and I just left it as it is. So now I'm going to go and fill the shape um, based on how it's reflecting on the water. And I'm also, before it dries out, I'm going to add another darker reflection. Even though it looks white, um, the reflection is white and I made it a little bit uh, darker. So it kind of shows the shadow pattern of the boat. 
and now I'm going to use white paint to bring uh, some of the eyelets which I couldn't able to lift out and this is just to bring back uh, the reflections of the water the reflection of the boat and everything else and um, when you do the white paint try to keep it to minimal and as you can see uh, this is the painting uh, we end up at the end so when you approach um, any kind of landscape tutorial uh, try to simplify objects and I highly recommend using a good watercolor paper as well and um, so the colors look um, as good as you know as you're putting it and uh, when you paint there's one more recipe which is really important as well uh, being confident in your painting and have faith and keep going thanks again for watching this watercolor landscape video tutorial with me let me know what you guys think about this video in the comment section below if you have any other questions or subjects you want me to cover in a watercolor so write me at watercolor impressions at gmail.com or comment down below before you go hit the subscribe button so you guys can get weekly video uploads from our channel and uh, good luck with your painting folks Thank you.